Good morning. Welcome back to Daily Prayer and Devotion. We're ready to go into another lesson, another session of prayer. Today we're going to be talking about prepare. We want to prepare ourselves. We want to be prepared for whatever happens, whatever comes. We want to just be prepared for our day. Things sometimes come and blindside us during our day. But we want to keep prayed up, stay prayed up. And keep ourselves in a pre preparation state. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into it. We're going to be looking in the book of Proverbs today. And we may uh, look also in the book of Revelation and the book of Isaiah, a few scriptures that we want to glean from and look and see what it takes to be prepared. We want to thank each and every one of you for joining in with us this morning joining in prayer and devotion to help you to start your day. We want to be prepared for whatever happens, for whatever comes. Being prepared is, is a thing that we cannot uh, leave to chance, but we must stay prepared for all things. Life is full of surprises, so we need to stay prepared. Hallelujah. All right, let us look into... Uh, what we want to talk about today. In the book of Proverbs, our focus scripture is found in uh, the 16th chapter. And the, the first verse, it says, the preparations of the heart in a man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So we have to prepare ourselves and the words we speak will lead to preparation and thoughts and all of the actions that you take on will help you to be in a position of preparation. All right, let us go into the Word and glean from the Scriptures. We're going to look into the book of Proverbs today and see what thus said the Most High. Hallelujah. Prepare. Proverbs 16 The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand or join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly, 
than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth, and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. A violent man enticeth his neighbor, and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things, moving his lips he bringeth evil to pass. The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Isaiah 14 For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked, and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest, and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no fella is come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. 
that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern, and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. That I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him under foot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety. And I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina art dissolved. For there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. Hallelujah. Let us turn our face to the wall and look upon high and seek the face of the Father that we might receive the help that we need, that we may prepare ourselves for the coming days, that we will be able to embark, embark upon the greatness that's in store for his people. Fathers, we come before you once again. We pray that you look down upon each and every one of us as we come before you in humbleness of heart. We pray, Father, that you will look and have mercy upon your people. Overshadow your people with your love. Take us to heights unknown. Prepare us for the coming days. Cause us to open our mouth and our ears and our heart unto you, that we may do what is pleasing in your sight. Help us to prepare ourselves for the coming days because we do not know what's going to befall in vivid context, but we do know that according to your word, that it's not going to be good for those that are unprepared. So, Father, we pray that you prepare us. Put us in the place and the position whereby nothing will be such a surprise, but that we will expect all things that will come from you. We pray, Father, for those that are yet in darkness, those that are yet asleep. We pray, Father, that you help them to prepare themselves, that they will be ready, that they will be prepared for the coming days, that they will align their lives and put their lives in order. We're thanking you and we're honoring and praising your name for just giving us a desire to be prepared, for giving us a word for your people. Father, we're thanking you and honoring and praising your high and your holy name. Because you're the one that gives us the capability to alarm ourselves. You're the one that help us to look, see, and pay attention to all of the signs that you have put in the earth. Signs that show us that the time is near. Signs that show and prove to us that your word is true. Prepare our hearts that we might be uplifted by your word. Prepare us, Father, that we might prepare those that are around us, that we may speak words of preparation to our families and to those that reside close by us. We thank you and honor and praise you today because we see wrath coming upon the earth, 
we understand that there is a sense of preparation. And we pray that you enlighten your people. Give us the actions, give us the desire that it takes for us to become more and better prepared for whatever will befall this place. We thank you, Father. We honor and we praise you. We pray for the family unit. We pray for fathers. We pray for mothers. We pray for the entire family unit, that they will be prepared, that they will prepare themselves the way of Yah. Hallelujah. We pray, Father, that you will overshadow your people with the love that comes from your cross. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Help us to commemorate it in our lives. Help us to partake in it that we might be better prepared for the coming days. Keep us in a prayerful state. Keep our minds stayed upon you. Let your energy and your virtue flow. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come in and lead and guide us into all truth. Help us to understand that there is a higher way, there is a better way. Help us, Father, to prepare ourselves. We thank you for all the divine provisions that you have already given us. We thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that helps us to be able to stay on track your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding keeps us in the know, keeps us in the position, keeps us against the hour that's coming up on this world. Father, we pray that you keep us in the center of your will and help us to stand, help us to speak those things which become sound doctrine. Help us to stand up on your word. We're praying for every home, every household. Everyone that's under the sound of my voice, we pray, Father, that you protect them with your divine protection. Let your hand cover them. Father, we pray for your people on today. We pray that you give them the hope that they need to be able to make this journey. Father, we pray that you prepare them in a way that they have never imagined. Father, we pray that you give us the help, and the capability. Give us the determination to stand upon your word that we might trust you like we never trust you before. Father, we know that the time is short and the days are evil. And we pray, Father, that you keep us in the center of your will, that we'll activate the power that comes through our relationship with you. Father, we pray that you increase the faith of your people. Help us to grow in grace. Help us to discern the time. Help us to stand up on your promises. We're thanking you. We're honoring and praising you on today. Help us to put you first in our life. Father, help us to do that thing that promotes your blessings. We thank you. We honor and we praise you on today. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Father, we're thanking you, we're honoring you, and we praising you, and we giving you the glory that you do. Father, we're looking unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We're thanking you, Father, for this day, for this time, for this hour. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing and for what you're going to do. Father, send your help. Someone is in need of a hand, reach down and pull up your people. Pull us to safety. In your mighty blessed name, we pray, Father, that you will open up the understanding of your people, those that are yet in darkness, those that are yet without understanding. We pray that you open up their understanding, that they might understand how sincere the situation is Help your people to understand that we have a limited amount of time to prepare ourselves. Father, we're here today. We're praying today. We're praying for your divine covering, that it will shroud us. We pray, Father, for the protection of your word, that you will keep us in that secret place, that we might abide under the shadow 
of the Almighty. We pray, Father, for divine preparation that you will cause it to permeate and saturate. Keep us in the midst of your will. Don't let our foot slip. And don't let us stumble, but keep us prepared. Let the prayers that we pray go out before us and set the path for us. Lead us not into temptation, but Father, we pray that you deliver us from all evil because you have the power, the glory belongs to you, and you're going to reside in your position forever. So Father, give us our rightful place that we might abide with you, that we may be there, that we may enjoy the position that you have given us, that we might reign alongside of you as you prepare to bring judgment upon those that have caused so much calamity, that have caused so much wickedness. As you mete out judgment against the wicked man, against the wicked entities that have set up rule against your people. Father, the, the day is at hand. The day is upon us where judgment will fall upon those that will stand against your word and stand against your people. So we pray that we'll be found prepared, that we'll be in position, that we will be ready to sit on the seat that we might be able to reign and judge this world. We're thanking you and we honor and praise in your name today. We pray for every family unit. We pray for their well-being. We pray, Father, that you bless every home, every resider in that home, everyone that's under the roof of that home. As we pray and seek your face today, we pray for all of those that are in tune. We pray, Father, for divine covering that you'll cover them, that you keep them, that you'll cause our mindset to be elevated, that you won't allow the situation in this world and the troubles of this world to overtake us and to drown out the holiness and the godliness within us. But we will stand apart from all of these things that will contaminate the spirit, prepare us for the coming days, keep us isolated from wrong, Keep us separated from evil. Don't let us be a proponent for all these things that cause damnation to the earth. But Father, help us to speak a word that will bring and enlighten your people to bring them out of the situation that will cause destruction for their families and for their homes. Prepare us for the coming days. Help us, Father, to be that one that is able to stand, able to look, able to know, able to witness. We're thanking you in advance for another day. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day. We thank you for how you watched over us as we slumbered and slept. You kept us with a mind as when we arose, when we got out of our place of rest, you're yet keeping us in the center of your will giving us a desire to call upon your name, giving us a desire to pray and seek your face on a daily basis. Thank you, Father. We honor you and we praise you on today. Let the words that are spoken on today, let them be a help. Let the words that we speak today help to lead and guide your people into that place of safety and to stay in the place of safety. Father, we speak comfort to the hearts of your people. And we pray that your blessing will continue to rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forever. In the name of Yahweh Shai, that the world know as Jesus. We pray, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. All right, family, we're so happy to be back once again. We're so thankful for another opportunity to come before you in prayer and supplication and to share with you the word of the Most High, and to speak words of encouragement unto you that you might be prepared for the coming days. And we know and we trust that things are really revving up. Sometimes when it seems like it's so far away, it's right upon us. 
Sometimes the time will cause you to deviate from your meditation, deviate from your consecration, deviate from your preparedness. But the prayers of the righteous will put us back on track and realign us and put us in a position where we can stay ready and stay prepared. Hallelujah. All right, let us look into a few scriptures on today because this is our purpose. This is why we are here to bring unto you a word that will help you in your day, that will help you to go through, help you to stand the test of time. We're speaking simply prepare. You know, when you prepare, you take the precautionary measures for the coming day, the coming hour. If you're going to go out of town, you have to prepare to go out of town. You have to make preparation, make reservation. If you're going to stay someplace, you pack your bags. You make every, make sure everything is ready and available because you are getting ready to make a journey. Take a journey to a place. And you want to be prepared. You don't want to get there. Oh, I forgot this. I forgot that. You don't want to get there and forgot to bring any money or you left your wallet at home, you want to be prepared. You want to be in a position where everything, all of the necessities that you need while you're on that journey will be at your exposure. So the book of Proverbs chapter number 16 and verse 1 says, the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So when we yield ourselves unto the Most High, we yield ourselves to Abba Yah. He will help us to be prepared. He will help your heart to make all the, the choices. You know, the Bible talks about the heart. The Bible says that keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So when your heart is in preparation, it's going to cause your entire being to do the thing and make the choices that will keep you prepared keep you in the center of the will of the Father. Let's glean through the scriptures a little bit more. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So in other words, when you meditate in your heart, it will help you to speak the right words. You should think twice before you speak once to make sure that you don't rattle off words that will cause dissimulation in the conversation. So the preparation of the heart and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. So many times people will justify the things that he do. It justifies something that was wrong, something that caused trouble. They'll try to justify it. But you have to weigh it against the spirit of the Holy Ghost before you try to justify an improper act. You need to repent and uh, turn away from that thing that's causing the dissimulation and the trouble. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Sometimes people, they think that what they do ought to be advanced. But if it's not committed to the ways of righteousness, it's going to fall. You cannot do things in the selfish attitude, thinking only of yourself, and feel as though that it's going to prosper, and feel as though the Father is going to put his hand of blessing upon that thing that you have done, and think you're going to prop yourself up in the blessings of the Most High, when it have been not been done correctly. This is why we must commit our works unto Father Yah, and they will be established. The Lord have made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So this is why we shouldn't fret ourselves because of evil doers. I said upon one time, the evil in this world is the grinding stone that sharpens you. And makes you keen and makes you prepared, makes you able and capable of being 
a wit ahead, be make you be uh, uh, sharper than those that are around you, those that are trying to perpetrate the evil. They have sharpened you up so that you can slice straight, straight through all of their antics and all of their traps. Hallelujah. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. That is speaking of this world is slated against the true people of the Most High. I said the true people. You have a lot of assistance going over to the false people. But everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Those hand joined in hand, he should not be unpunished. You see, these people have perpetrated evil. They, Psalms 83 told us they, they have conspired against the true people of the Most High. They have planned to keep you down. But if you prepare yourself, nothing can prevent you from excelling to that seat of reigning. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. See, this is what we have to do. We have to get away from evil. We cannot practice evil. Let me say this. When you prepare yourself in prayer, and when you continue to come before the Most High, something actually is going on in the spirit realm. There are times and days in your life through the flesh when you will not be as strong as other days. But the prayers that you pray set up buffers and protectors for you. On a day that you would have fallen, those prayers that you have already prayed put buffers up and protectors so that you will not stumble, that you will not fall in the way. And then on days when you are strong and ready, and able to withstand those temptations and trials, there's no need for him to place buffers or, or escape hatches for you because you're strong on that day. This is why you cannot uh, ignore the, the power of prayer. You cannot allow it to sit dormant, but you must utilize it and activate it. This is why the Bible tells us to pray that you enter not into temptation. So your prayer life sets up protection for you so that you can remain in the center of the will of the Father. And it encourages you to stay with it, to fight the good fight of faith that you might lay hold on eternal life. All right, let's continue. When a man ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So when you continue to stay in the face of the Father, he will give you an attitude, he'll give you a disposition that even if you got an enemy, they cannot continue to be against you because of that aura that's placed around you. They cannot fight against you because of the perfection that the, the power of the Holy Ghost has shrouded you with. They can't fight against something that's unfightable. They, they can't beat something that's unbeatable. Hallelujah. So when a man weighs, please, Father Yah, he will even make his enemies to calm down and be at peace because they're knowing that they're going to end up fighting a losing battle when they come against the Most High's people. And eventually, the perpetrators of evil against us are going to be annihilated. Hallelujah. So this is why they ought to align themselves and come subject to the power and to the authority of the Father. All right? Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. So we need to understand that if you don't have a whole lot, you don't have to have loads and loads of money like people try to to make it seem like you, you got to have all of this money to be happy. No, 
That's not the case. The father can take a little and make it into a lot. He took two fish and a few loaves and fed 5,000 people. He's able to stretch what you have. He's able to, to give you abundance. He's able to give you a lot. If you can handle it, if you can put yourself in the position to receive, he's not going to loathe you with all of these blessings just for you to hoard them all to yourself. That's what the enemy does. He will give his proponents of evil, the defiled and filthy lucre, and it will only cause them to enter into death and damnation. But little that a righteous man have, hallelujah, is better than those that got great revenues and great riches. Hallelujah. Eventually you're going to be in your position where you will have great revenues. But for the time being, be satisfied. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directed his steps. So we got to be able to, to have divine direction, to be prepared to go in the way that the Spirit leads you. You know, sometimes the Spirit will lead you in a way, but a person will disobey the instruction to come from the Spirit and end up ensnared. End up in a position now where you need more help. So let us prepare ourselves to hear the voice of the Most High. To make the right decision. Even sometimes it hurts to make the right decision. Hallelujah. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresses. Hallelujah. Not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. So when you prosper and when he Fill your bag with the blessings. Stay on the right path. You don't want him to put a hole in your meal sack, as the old folk used to say. Every time you get something, every time it seems like you're getting ready to be advanced, it dwindles away. As you walk, as you go through your day, it's a hole in your meal sack. When you don't pay attention to what the word of the Most High is saying. It's a hole in your meal sack. When you can't get over and above being destitute. So we must pay attention to the words and the works of righteousness. We must do that which is pleasing in his sight. Hallelujah. When you look in the book of of Isaiah chapter number 14, it's a profound uh, scripture text that says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. You, you have to be prepared to be in this particular position. This is not just for anybody to be able to, to enter into this position in life. Verse 2 in the 14th chapter of Isaiah says, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Did you hear that? This day is coming, sisters and brothers, and you must be prepared. You must understand the scriptures. The scriptures have been taught incorrectly. The Father is trying to reverse the curse that has been upon us. He's trying to shift in positions in the world, shift in those that are in high places of authority in the earth. He's trying to shift that and put his people in those positions. So in the process of doing that, he have to tear down what they have built up. 
Let me read that verse to you again. Verse number two says, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. That hasn't taken place yet. That is a future event. And in order to participate in it, you must be prepared. Hallelujah. Read verse 3, it says, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. So he's going to change everything as you know it. And we cannot be dumbfounded with the, 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 the teachings that, that we were taught in, in the church that was incorrect. They thought they was right, but they did not understand this particular passage of Scripture is prophetic. This has not occurred yet. It's yet to take place. And in order for you to reign and be in this position, you must be prepared. You must be awakened. Hallelujah. Verse number four says, Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. See, the Gentiles have been in rule for, for ages. But the time of ruling and reigning is about to come to a close. This is why you see all of the implementation that they're trying to implement in the world and in the earth to try to sustain their position on high. But the Most High is going to come in, knock all that stuff down, you know, sometimes people get afraid talking about the mark of the beast and, oh, they're going to, you ain't going to be able to buy and sell and blah, blah, blah. Well, yes, the scripture told you that to, to get you to the place of preparation so that you would not take those things, that you would not take the mark, that you would not uh, uh, just relinquish your reign over because you're afraid. The Bible tells you that you got to be strong. You cannot allow uh, uh, your life and the, the zest for life to come in and, and annihilate your future existence. Sometimes a person, they are so afraid of dying that they miss living. Hallelujah. Verse number five says, And the Lord have broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. So this is what's happening even as we speak. They're squabbling and trying to figure it out. But it's shifting. It's taking, it, it's switching hands. Hallelujah. He who smote the people in wrath with a continuous stroke, and he that ruled nations in anger is persecuted and none hinder it. So, so is, when the Most High get ready to do His thing, you better move out the way, because if if you stand in the way of His chastisement, guess what? You're gonna get some stripes too. This is why you need to be awakened. Some people are trying to protect and 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 stay the hand of the Father that's that's meeting out the the persecution to return back on the heads of our oppressor. Move out the way, or you will receive stripes also. You hear what the scripture says, verse 6, He that smote the people in wrath with a continuous stroke, he that ruled nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. If you try to hinder, you're going to receive some stripes too. The whole earth is at rest and quiet, and they bring forth into singing. Why? Because the wickedness of, of the rule of the, the wicked people have been laid to rest. So now the earth can, 
can be harmonious again. Yes, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of the Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no fella come up against us. So since the evil person has moved out the way, now uh, folk can have some peace finally. Hallelujah. This hasn't taken place yet. This is a future event. This is why you must be prepared. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Stirred up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth, have, it has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nation. So can't you see that? You know, you got a lot of these people that's ruling and reigning and thinking that they got it all together. It's a day set. The Father going to take care of a lot of this stuff. But sometimes we're blindsided and we think that it's all the end of the world, all troublesome time. The Bible says when you see all these things happening, lift up your head because your redemption is drawing nigh. Verse number 10. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Are thou also become weak as weak? O thou become like unto us, thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of the vows, and the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? So it's given you pointers of how and why these people have been able to do what they have done because they have went into covenant with the wicked one. But now it has come to an end. Now the nations have been weakened. They have fallen to the ground. They are tumbling. Hallelujah. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will send unto the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will, set, will sit upon of the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So this is what these people that have went into covenant with Satan have taken on this attribute also. And they have reigned for a certain period of time. But when their reign ends, and when the father replaced those and put his people in power, it's never going to end. You're going to reign throughout world eternity. This is why you must be prepared. You must prepare yourself. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Even John the Baptist was preaching the same message. Prepare ye the way of the Lord and make your path straight. Hallelujah. Yet thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, and made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of the prisons, of his prisoners? So we, we see that the, there is a prison system set up full of our people. They're going to have to pay for that too. Hallelujah. You're going to have to pay for it. But my situation and my plight is to make you aware that you will be prepared. We don't need any more of our young men to enter into those prisons. They need to awaken. They need to do the thing that promote righteousness into their life that will help them to deter going and spending their entire life incarcerated. All the kings of the nation, even all of them, lie in glory. Hallelujah. Everyone in his own house. But thou are cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch and as the remnant of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, 
that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trotting under the feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children. So as you be prepared, those that are unprepared, those that have perpetrated evil, the scripture is saying prepare slaughter for his children. The children of those that cause all this damnation and destruction and and to to overdo uh, the punishment that they were supposed to do unto the people of the Most High, the scripture is saying prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquities of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. You're not going to do it again. You're not going to start over. Just like the, the, the people are now, the, the people that are in rule are trying to make preparation to continue their reign. Little do they know that they're trying to go against the Father. It's not going to work. They're going to even try to war against him. This is why we must be prepared for that day. It's going to be a treacherous time, sisters and brothers. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and the remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. Notice he's going after the men like they went after our men. Our men have been under attack for ages, centuries. So the Bible says, return unto him double. For I will rise against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name of the remnant of, and sons and nephews, saith the Lord. Those are men. I will also make it a possession for the bitter and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the abyssum of destruction, said the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts have sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. So no one is going to be able to stop this. Hallelujah. No one is going to be able to come in and turn the hand of the Most High, but he's going to do of his good pleasure. All right, my friend, we're out of time. We're going to have to stop and go forth and look into the latter part of our prayer. We want to thank each and every one of you for joining in with us on today. We thank you for your precious time, but we must be prepared. Don't go unprepared. Don't allow your life to be unprepared. Don't let the enemy come in and fool you out of your blessing. But you must be prepared. You must allow the Father to work in your life. You must be ready at every beck and turn to do of his good pleasure. Hallelujah. Let us look away and seek the face of the Most High. Father, we thank you. We honor and praise your name today. Thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to our hearts how that you have come in and given us insight where insight have been lost. We pray, Father, that you will guide us today that you take us through every test, every trial, every tribulation. Guide our footsteps as we go along our way. Take us to heights unknown, higher heights and deeper depths. In the name of Yahweh, shine that the world knows Jesus. We say amen, amen, and amen. All right, family, that's all we have for today. 
we like to thank you for your, your time. Thank you for joining in with us as we go before the Most High in prayer and supplication. We pray that the words that were spoken be utilized in your life, that you might be able to, to go into that place of destiny that he had prepared for you. Before we go, we'd like to say, if you're new to this channel, we would like for you to subscribe to this channel. Yes, we'd like for you to subscribe and hit the like button and the notification bell that you might get the lives and the uploads that we bring in the future. Share this message with someone that they may understand that their plight is at hand, that our time has come, that we must be prepared for the coming days that the Father may be able to get the glory out of our lives. All right, that's all we have today. We're going to say peace and blessing and shalom. Hallelujah.